Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing a miniature gouache painting of a picture of a lake that I took during a recent camping trip. And I'm going to be doing a journal spread about it. This is my um, art journal slash sketchbook insert in my traveler's notebook. And I only have a few spreads done. But the purpose of this one is to incorporate more drawing, painting, illustration type of work. And I just want to hone my skills. So each one kind of has, has a theme. I still incorporate collaging elements and writing because that's kind of like my style. And so for this spread, I already put some random collage materials down here. Um, and so this spread is going to be about that camping trip. So I have my photo that I'm refer referencing that I took of the lake where we stayed at. And I'm going to just use this tiny little piece of scrap watercolor paper. I'm going to be using some brushes from Utrecht and Princeton Art and Brush Company. I've got my little palette from Jack Richardson two jars of water. I'm also going to be using some Arteza gouache. This is the set of 60. I'm going to be kind of using realistic colors. So um, yeah, I will kind of talk through using gouache as I paint. So this is going to be a very casual journal with me, sketch with me, paint with me type of video. And maybe you can grab your own notebook, journal, sketchbook, whatever you're working on. Go ahead and grab it and let's journal together and make some art together. So right away when I started painting, I realized that I probably didn't need to do a sketch. I just really wanted to use this really awesome colored mechanical pencil from Pilot. Um, so it was just a few lines. It took me about a minute to sketch out. And then I grabbed a bigger brush than the ones I had chosen because I wanted to make it more abstract. So with that, using a bigger brush kind of forces me to make decisions quicker. Um, it forces me to kind of fill up the space faster and use larger shapes. So the painting turned out to be quite impressionistic versus really, really detailed, which I loved. The way I do it is I like to use more water in the beginning because I'm more used to watercolors to begin with. I've used them a lot longer and more frequently than I use gouache. So I started off kind of using my watercolor background and then I started layering it with more opaque paint using less water as time went on. And I found that as soon as I started getting opaque with the paints, I started losing my way. But then um, I realized that it's very forgiving. You can go over spots that you didn't like because it's opaque, it'll hide mistakes a little bit easier. And I just started really having fun with it. So this little miniature painting didn't take long at all, especially because I used a big brush initially. Then I switched to a smaller brush because I started to get a little bit frustrated with some of those little trees. And this just brought me back to that weekend where we went to the lake and it wasn't quite fall-like yet. It was really hot and the trees weren't exactly as bright as I made them in here. There was a lot more green than orange and yellow, but I decided to embellish it a little bit because there were some, you know. Yeah, it was a really beautiful day with the dogs and my friends and so this was at Memorial Lake. The benches were, they didn't turn out very detailed, but that's all right. Uh, you get the gist of it. I had a little bit of trouble getting the reflection in the water, but overall I am really satisfied with this little miniature painting. And I just love paintings in miniature. They're just so delightful. They take me way shorter of uh, an amount of time and I can just knock out a piece really quick. And that is what I'm all about these days is um, kind of trying to fit in creativity wherever I can in the day, especially when I have a baby. Who knows if I'm gonna even have time to make a small painting like this. Um, 
so the faster I can get at it, the, the more I can squeeze in that me time, um, the better. This is one of my favorite scrapbook paper pads that I have maps, texts, and ledgers, and I've had this for quite a while. I keep pulling from it. It's just so great. It has all of these awesome grids, and then you get maps, which I love, vintage style maps, and then you have postcards and ephemera. That's where I found the um, date thing here, and I just cut that out, and then you have all these cool text, music notes, and calligraphy, and so it's such a cool pad to kind of just use to emphasize certain things. I, It's not like true vintage paper, but it's so nifty and handy, and I think I got this at Joanne's Fabric Store, and um, it's only 8x8, but that's perfect for me, so this is what I kind of um, use in my journal. So the next thing I want to do is use this awesome shimmering calligraphy palette. These are the Fine Tech. I think they're different now, but I just really want to use the shimmery bronzy color and do some calligraphy to kind of like write where this is and a little bit more information about the spread. So I'm really excited. I'm going to grab my tools to do that and show you. This is my oblique pen holder. I haven't done calligraphy in a while, so this should be interesting. I think it's been like a few weeks now and I always have to kind of get back in the groove so these are all the nibs that go in it and I think today I'm gonna go with this one which is the Tachikawa G and it's a manga nib but the Nico G is really really similar they're basically the same so this is a flexible nib that you use for calligraphy this is just a blunt syringe and I use it to drop some water into the palette. There we go. And that'll need to soak in a bit. I had a little bit of trouble with the pen nib catching on the fibers of the paper. This craft paper is a little bit more textured than I'm used to. I think I just needed to be a little more gentle with the pen nib, um, especially when I was doing any upstrokes. That's kind of where I tripped up, but I am pretty pleased with how I made the flourishes and things like that. So calligraphy is something that I really enjoy practicing and my art journal is a great place to do that. So that was um, a fun little thing to add. And how gorgeous is the shimmer on this ink? It's so beautiful. Look how much of this gold that I've used. It's so, so, so pretty. All right, so now I'm gonna add some writing in the empty spaces around here. And before I do that, since there's some stuff on this side that I don't want to transfer onto this side, I am going to put my writing board in between. And if you will notice, it leaves a really, really handy guideline. I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but when I'm writing on blank paper, I like to use a writing board underneath that has this grid. Just another reason why I love this thing. And I can, I can kind of see where I'm supposed to be writing so it leaves my writing looking nice and straight across the page and that's what I did for you know these areas here
All right, so that is my completed art journaling spread. I had a ton of fun painting this and writing this, practicing my calligraphy, and I hope you enjoyed um, making art with me today and journaling with me. I am really excited to continue this art journal notebook. Um, I just like the challenge of incorporating something that's hand-drawn or hand-painted. Yeah, so let me know what you think about this combination of collaging and lettering and writing and art. A little bit different from just doing scrapbooking type journaling and I really like that, especially because October is Inktober and so many artists that I admire have been posting daily drawings and so although I can't do daily artwork, um, this is just my way of doing a little bit more art than usual. So it's really great. I'm just so inspired by everyone. I hope you gain some inspiration as well. All right, until the next video, I want to wish you happy journaling and see you next time.